So I grew up in the media and the entertainment world, and so I'm very conscious of that, as you can see the camera. And my family are very influential, powerful people in the, in the entertainment world. And as much as opportunities as I had, I was running nightclubs, and I was in the VIP to the biggest events in the world. But I, I myself like, was not happy with it. I was, felt very uh, big lack inside, especially on the relationship level, and especially on the, like, the personal level of like, you know, being creative and stuff that wasn't allowing to me so much. Even when I went to university in Brighton, which is a very like, hippie, like, cool place. I think there's a, an American version. It's a sister school. What's the American Hippie College? It's a famous one. From the 60s, come on. Uh, Kent State? No, the um, famous one from all the movies uh, about the 60s. Berkeley. 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 It's a My school. brother's a graduate. So it's like an English version of Berkeley, so you can imagine what it's like down there. Anyway, so I, I decided with my musical friends and more spiritually energized guys to head into the beach area, not be on the campus, and have my own space. And I developed myself. And guess who was the only person? nearby that happened to be where I needed to go at that time. I was starting to get interested into Judaism because my best friend I'm religious and this and that, all these different stories, which I'm going to go into all of them now. And the only person around the corner that I could connect to on a Jewish level was a Chabad rabbi, the other Babich. Everyone's heard about the Babich, they're everywhere, just like Coke. And that's the first group we'll talk about, because that was my first entrance into Judaism, really. Because I had grown up in Edgeware, where there is, I, my parents went to Reform, my grandfather was part of United, and and like really, you know, I was in the Jewish movement Habanim, but there wasn't really much Jew Judaism talked about. And was sort of <coughs> made to see Mir Sharim and the religious community as a very strange thing. That's what my experience was. Nothing to do with my life. So I didn't really know much. But the Babich were very amicable, and very available, and he made his house open to me for sh Shabbos. And that really opened my eyes, eyes to really what Hasid is, what I feel really is, which is not necessarily the Babich, but it's the idea of doing kindness. And this kindness and positivity is the word chasidim means chasid, means kindness. And this is really the, the real, like, this is the spiritual side we're getting to, the mystical side, is that if it wasn't for the kindness of the rabbi, there was other people that wanted to host me when I came to the shul, but the rabbi insisted, and he made his life surround mine at that time in my life, which I needed, and he dedicated himself. And, you know, that, that really helped me in university because I was really searching and I had all the groups very interested in me. I had the Islamic people telling me, you know, we're the way and I had Jewish people in their group. I had the Christians telling me they're the way. I had every single group and cult and, and it, you know, everyone was trying to draw me. I was hanging around the, the bars and the poet places, um, cafes playing guitar and singing and doing my thing and everyone was trying to draw me into their thing. But the Babasha guy didn't draw me. I came to him. I felt a, a need for Judaism and to find out what my own path was, not everybody else telling me theirs. And I happened to be living with an Islamic person and then a Christian person. And both of them, their paths didn't seem like where I went ahead. Um, the Islamic guy was very into violence and the, it just happened to be that was my experience. And the Christian guy was very into uh, psychologically playing with people. So those two experiences made me very clear that I don't want to be either. That's not my... You know, I'm not trying to control people, I'm not trying to dominate people, I want to connect with people, have positive experience. So, Judaism was positive for me at the initial beginning in, 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 in Brighton. Before that, reform, conservative, didn't speak to me. When I experienced the chassidim, the chassid, kindness, the, the chassid, that's what drew me out. And that, and seeing, I'll tell you another important thing, seeing the family life. That was like, unbelievable, seeing beautiful children, you know, it happened to be a famous English boxer lived next door. It's in a mansion. And his name is Chris Eubank. And uh, if any of you from London, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He was a big guy, you know, very, very dark and very, like, muscular. And he was cleaning his truck. And I was walking with the rabbi's kids and uh, back from synagogue. And we were on the way to the mill. And they invite Chris Eubank on his truck, polishing this beautiful truck. You know, just made one more polish. They invite him for the mill. Come, imagine, you know, this is like chesed, kindness. A neighbor, famous celebrity, you know, like a very tough guy. They invite him to come for Shabbos, and he's like, oh, all right, you know, maybe I'll come, you know, like, he did come. Anyway, but <laughs> uh, I want to tell some parts of the story because I want to, you know, have to be careful, you know, be politically correct because something happened that's funny after that. But um, I'll say that if you come, come chill with me in a private time, and that's the next part of the story. I'm going to say it privately. Anyway, so we had a nice meal, and uh, 
I'm just saying like that experience, and then my, they brought my parents to London and uh, to Brighton from London. And they had that experience, the Chesed again, the Chesed, and then I went back to London because I had to, you know, not be in the university, to work a little bit, and I experienced the Chesed again now from a different group. And more, they're called the Yeshivish group, and they were very kind to me again. My brother, my brother-in-law to be, who was my best friend then, was also very involved with this group, and I saw that both groups had very positive experiences, and that, you know, that Chesed, that that that. That inspired me, and that's, thank God it's something that the Jewish people are known for in the world as kind people, and that's something that the Torah itself calls us as kind. So it's not exclusive to Hasidim, obviously. But the the point the point for me is that the Hasidim, if they really live up to what their name is, then they, they manifest that maybe in an emphasized way, and that's really what I'm personally drawn to that side of it. So that's why I start off with Lubavitch because everyone knows that that's what they do. That's their Rebbe, their leader. Which if you go back to the beginnings of Hasidus, which we'll, you know, we've got off now to understand why, why I was joined to it personally and what, what it's about. So the, the Rebbe, the, the, the seventh Rebbe from Lubavitch, who goes all the way back to Rosh Zalman, he has a, a trace back to seven gen generations. Goes back to Rosh Zalman, the Balatanya is famously known, goes back to the Maggid. And the Maggid goes back to the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov was the first one actively call himself a chassid and, and name the movement and maybe it came out once again, not himself, but the people themselves that was named as a chassidim. But the idea was that the, the chassid of going beyond the letter of the law, of going beyond what Hashem expects of you, obviously that means they're holding in a place where they were doing what God expects of them, which you know, nowadays it's not so easy to understand what exactly that means, but simply it means they were keeping the Torah mitzvahs, the 613 mitzvahs and all the different uh, rules that come out of that, the rule the halakhic basis of that, and through the, and then beyond that, they would they would go beyond, obviously in a careful way, not to like lose sight of what the point of it all, but they would go beyond to do things that would really connect them strongly to their creator and to their fellow man. And the Baal Shem Tov really emphasized three things, which is me personally, if you want to know who I am, my whole personality builds up that. And uh, this is what drew me initially. This is three things. Remember these three things. The love of, of God, the love of His truth, His Torah, because the truth we say is the Torah, and the love of His people, the Jewish people, which can manifest in Eretz as well, depending on you know which, which hashkaf, which group you're in, and because this is the place where we should be. For me personally, the more, the more fundamental point is just to love the fellow Jew, wherever he is. It doesn't make a difference. So the the these three things is what this is the pillars that drew me, and then they're called the objectives, truth of our religion. That the Zohar Kodesh says the Torah and Hashem and the this is the mystical sefer of Baruchai Hashem Baruchai said brought down in the cave. He was a mystical figure from our history all the way back to maybe 1,800 years ago. He brought down this in, this idea, these three important things: the Torah, the truth, Hashem, and Yisrael all one. These three things are all one. They're unified and they're the ultimate objective truth. And there's nothing else more objectively true than those three things. This is like a mystical text, and I'm quoting it. Because for me, that came alive. Now, now picture it. I went to a non-Jewish school. I had an earring, I had long hair. I was a cool guy, very in with the London scene. I, you can ask my wife, you're all welcome to come Shabbos one day and meet her. And she, she knew me then, and she can testify I was like the coolest guy in the scene at that time. To be honest, yeah? I'm not being arrogant, I'm being totally honest. I used to run the clubs, and I was the coolest guy. You can see it in the New York Times, it says it. Yeah? I don't have to like, make it up. Yeah? Um, 